Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to MDL Autumn 2016. It's time for our next match, another lower bracket showdown. Winner of this game will be facing OG in the next round. It's Secret versus LGD Forever Young. Best of three match. I'm LD. And uh, finally, I've gotten rid of gods, but I've got another David for you, and it's my old friend, Luminous Inverse himself. How are you doing? What's, what's up, LD? Had lunch, ready to go. I Had hope lunch. these yeah, it's lunchtime over here. Yeah, so uh, for those who don't know, Lumi has uh, abandoned those of us in America. I think you chose a good time to leave the country, by the way, if you saw the presidential debate. But <laughs> you've been, uh, where have you been, Lumi? I'm at Hong Kong right now, so uh, that perfect world lag does not affect me. I'm immune. Really? So, yeah. I mean, I'm right next to China, so <laughs> the servers are pretty good here. Uh huh, yeah. Do, 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 they, do you have like full internet access in Hong Kong, or do you still have to go through the firewall? Um, it's kind of weird. Uh, for for the Dota issue, we, it's it's just as if I'm in China because it's close. It's just more, more so a location than than the firewall issue. Okay, I get to play on the China server, so good stuff there too. Do you get unfiltered news, uh, or do you get uh? No, we, the we other kind of news because I we still have Google here. Okay, yeah. so so you got the best of both worlds then. Yeah, Tiananmen Square is a uh, tourist attraction for all I know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Well, on a slightly less uh, politically charged note, uh, let's <laughs> let's look at our, our opening game here. So LGD Forever Young, uh, they did face Team Secret earlier this event. They got 2-0'd Lumi. Frankly, they looked pretty weak. Uh, this It's a new roster. They have some new faces. Uh, and then you've got, of course, Xiao and Super is kind of the old guard. Uh, but they they did not look very prepared, especially compared to like on the other side. You've got like the new newbie roster who came in really hot. OG who did their homework coming into this event, uh, facing a team secret that looked kind of shaky at the start of the event, but has gotten better. I would say as things have gone along, and uh, ultimately did get knocked down, but it was to a very tough EG squad in a close series. So. As the draft unfolds, we see a Drow first pick, Bounty Hunter, Keeper of the Light, Reply. So Secret already revealing both of their supports nice and early. What do you what do you think about these opening picks? I think the Bounty Hunter in particular is very important in this matchup, and we're going to see it a lot in this best of three. Uh, both Xiao Wei as well as Puppy has been really enjoying those roaming supports, and I think it's going to be a high tier pick. Even though I don't think either of those heroes would be a high pick in, in other matchups here, it would not surprise me if like Ricky gets snapped up here for Xiao Wei, and then they have that kind of roaming, uh, roaming battle. Speaking of bounty, I saw Poppy drop the sickest century ward against some other te team's bounty. I forgot which ones. I think uh, it was against MVP. So uh, they are definitely prepared to deal against each other as well. But right now we're gonna see a Bat Rider instead. We saw Yang playing an absolute monster Bat Rider. Uh, well, monster maybe uh, overestimate, but uh, he did lose the game. But it was a good one. Uh, and we're gonna see we're gonna see Yao here. Do, hopefully do the same. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. Your initial assess, but I think it was a monster game by Yang. But the team just was way too heavy by the by the time like uh, when he started dying. I, I feel like he had done his job and. Bat just cannot 1v5. <laughs> He's not that kind of hero. So uh, the Bat Rider does get picked up. Uh, and Secret already having picked their two supports, they don't have counter initiation on the Bat Rider. Normally that comes from a support hero. The Oracle, uh, the Vengeful Spirit, less popular now. Uh, at least like a Dazzle or Shadow Demon. Uh, Shadow Demon's already banned. Uh, something defensive. I guess Disruptor's out there, but they already have their support duo unless you want to run uh, like an unconventional offlane bounty. So. I, I like this bat pick a lot, and it is definitely the weakness of a, a keeper bounty support duo. But secret, they are not afraid to go for these weird support duos. They did the bounty IO earlier the t this tournament, and it actually worked out pretty well. So I feel like if anyone can make it work, it's them. But that said, I'm loving this bat rider pick so far. There's still the Nyx assassin offlane, and remember, Forev has been gaining MMR in uh, Europe <laughs> by playing Nyx nonstop. Easy pubs, apparently. Yeah. And honestly. You can make the argument that Nyx is probably one of the best off lanes. Like you have Spike Carapace to open up no matter when the bat rider or where the bat rider is, and then you got obviously the vendetta into the uh, you know all the stuns and mana burn. So I imagine it's gonna get a, a nod here from Puppy if it's not banned out. So LGD, uh, they picked the Drow. Obviously, the one thing the Keeper is really good at is slowing down pushes early, and also split pushing if you want to try and avoid having to Ten fight. Seconds the drow head on. Uh, generally with Secret, it's been a Storm uh, or a Morphlane as like their go-to partner to fully take advantage of the Keeper of the Life. Of course, there's there's other options like Naga out there. Uh, good against the Lasso Initiation potentially with the Song. What do you want for Secret out of their cores? You mentioned like the Storm. Nyx already. Well, the Storm yeah. is banned, so. 
Okay, never mind that. So, no, I, I will go for Nyx here. It's a safe pick. It makes sense. It also pressures Drow. Not not so much in lane, but more so when she's off farming on her own. Uh, the one weakness of Nyx is that Drow lineups tends to group up and push fairly early. Mm -hmm. So your window of ganking opportunity kind of drastically decrease. Um, LGDC that, more afraid of, afraid of like those five-man offlaners uh, or counter five-man because they ban the Darkseer, uh, something that can pressure the Drow and also contribute in a 5v5, and, and they banned the Tidehunter, which it has been Forev's most commonly picked hero this event. So it does leave the Knicks out there. Uh, well, I guess we're going to see if they want to go for it, though. Yep. Oh, also one thing about picking Keeper of Light so early is that both of these teams has been using Timbersaw a lot, in particular for Super. FY has you know won multiple games at, uh, on the back of a, a big... Uh, Timber and just having the keeper out there says all right You could pick Timber if you want, but he's not gonna have a good game at least not for the first 20 minutes He's not gonna be able to snowball. All right PA hits the field of battle and We've seen the support PA uh, <laughs> We've seen the mid PA uh, We've seen I think one or two safe lane PAs. So like technically you don't really know where the PA is gonna be played I, I think for this team. It's been mid one handling it usually uh, but it's a good gap closer, and having those versus Drow is pretty nice. And also resistant to physical damage heavy strats, but LGD just have like a casual Drow at this point. They're not overly committed. Yeah, and for me, it's very easy for LGD right now to pick up, let's say, an Elder Titan. Great protection here from the PA. Kind of When she runs in, there's a lot of things that she needs to avoid. The natural order takes away all of her physical armor, which makes her cry a little bit. And she's already a very low HP hero, so... Natural Order also helping the match go nuke. Um, but, you know, we're moving further and further away from lots of range here. This is such a secret draft. Like, they have zero stuns at this point. <laughs> it's it feels very weird, but I I just I can't doubt them yet because they, they 2 would LGD Forever Young, and I just have not been impressed by them so far this event. But that's it. Look, LD. Look, look at this draft. What's going on? <laughs> look, Mana Leak's a stun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is a little annoying for Batrider because you want to just drag. You want to move while they're lassoed. So uh, yeah. I think Mana... But as far as, like, non... Like, I wouldn't say he counters Batrider, but he's not the worst support no. versus him ever. They, they got some sweet combos, though. They got them uh, Shocker Magic into Double Stifling Dagger, right? Yeah, it's very cheesy. Do you, do you think it's, like... How strong do you think that combo is? It's not bad. You're, you're almost guaranteed to have one dagger crit because, you know, they built on PRD off of each other. Mm -hmm. And w once you get some nice orbs, it's it's pretty sick. All right, there, there's some real stun. There's some real control. But I feel like Oracle almost is one of the best heroes against Slaughter, right? You get to get rid of the amplified damage quite quickly. If your draw ever gets focused, you got the uh, False Promise. Um, the one annoying thing about having Oracle is that despite your False Promise, the, the disarm being so good against PA, he is also very good against you. You're very likely just going to get daggered and crit in the middle of a fight, and you can't really react that fast because the kill is almost instantaneous. So LGD, they go back to the well for a face we haven't seen that much of lately. It is the Dragon Knight. Generally a weaker laner, uh, unless he's got certain matchups, but my god, their 5-man is already very scary, especially with an Oracle to back him up. and. He's great against that Amplify damage, Five and honestly, Lumi, yeah, they have Keeper of the Light. They have no other deep push, so I, I like LGD Forever Young going into a push strat. Uh, they're actually going to ban the Witch Doctor Radiant secret, so they're clearly worried about that five-man pressure. Yeah, and it's a push strat that's not over reliantly on, on creeps. Like Dragonite, it was going to just sit in the front. Normally, Mana Leak becomes annoying for heroes that just tank the tower, but you still got uh, the Fortune Send to debuff the Mana Leak. So I feel like LGD Forever Young is quite prepared. They almost lost a game yesterday to uh, FY beat IGV 2-0. Mm -hmm. And IGV pulled out a big Dragon Knight in that game too. So maybe so taking a page out of their book. Obviously Super is probably still one of the best DKs in China. So no. definitely ready for that. And we will see Timbersaw being the last band out here. Okay. Yeah, they don't really have the best control. Ooh, LGD, ooh. I mean, you want to talk about Slardar stuns. You've got the Ephotic Shield now. I, also, it removes the track, uh, yeah. the amp damage. Does it remove Monoleak as well? Yes, it does. It, oh my! It removes God. everything. This, it this removes is a everything. great abatting game, and you know, generally where we don't see him picked is when like you Ten you need remaining. when like, experience is at a premium. You need like a strong zoning support. Sometimes he's a little bit weak there, but Razor. how good do you, of an abatting game do you feel it is? It's super great. I mean, he also allows you to have a secondary front line for the Draw Ranger, the Frostmourne 
sword, whatever it's called in Dota 2 now, I, I don't know. But uh, Curse of Avernus, I believe. Curse of Avernus. Uh, allows you to hit tower and siege quicker. Dragonite don't need to build for as much attack speed uh, if he wants to rely on the, the curse a bit. It's a great Abaddon game. I think Abaddon is actually one of the best counters to Bounty because simply of your playstyle. You want to be grouping up and push, and Bounty is just inherently weak against that. And like you said, the track gets removed by the shield. So overall, very, very good pick. You don't see it out of China too often, but xiaowei has got the tricks up his sleeves. Uh, so unfortunately, the new patch, I believe, has bugged the tournament lobbies, guys. So some of these players, uh, we won't be able to see their actual names. I may have to do a little detective work to figure it out. But uh, for players that we can identify, we have Puppy playing the Bounty Hunter. Had a huge impact. Not early, though, Lumi. He actually struggled a lot in their opening game in the, the first round as the Bounty, but they had one good fight where he got four track kills. I think he was, like, level eight or so. They were down about 8K gold, and they swung it, like, five, 6K the other way on the back of that fight. So, you know, something God's mentioned is he feels like it, Bounty isn't really that lane dominator anymore. He's much more like a, a mid-game hero. Sure. Uh, I think most teams are really prepared to deal against the Bounty as well. You see Centuards, even Dusk coming out in the early teams are drafting in a way where bounty doesn't get the easy ganks like dragon eye mid like try ganking that you're not gonna have an easy time uh, but got in a bad end you can't really harass him effectively he's happy to trade blows oracle has the drow aura even so yeah you know, there's it feels like this is much more just gonna be about the track this game maybe a courier snipe here or there right and let's finish up the introduction here for uh, Team Secret. I muted and I deserve it. That's Pylai Dai playing the Keeper of Light. We got Yeah playing uh, PA. I imagine that's mid one. Forev on the uh, random faces. He's on the slaughter. Looks like it's going to be a defensive safe lane slaughter and offensive trialing here coming out from Team Secret. And I do believe Phantom Assassin. That's MP or is that Secret? Uh, I, or, or, I think it's MP. That's mid one. I, I, well, yeah, it looks like mid one on the Razor and MP on the PA. I'm okay. pretty, mid one's been mid every game, so. Uh, generally, mid one is on that, like, flashier type hero, like the PA. Razor just kind of sits in his lane, but uh, not the case this game. So, offensive tri lane. Obviously, Keeper of the Light excels at this. Are they going to be ready for it? They're already getting a lot of harassment out onto the support Oracle for Team uh, LGD Forever Young. Like, how, how effective do you expect this tri lane to be? Honestly, not too much. Their goal really here is to deny farm to the Draw Ranger, but Draw Ranger having two very defensive supports to keep her alive, I think she's able to keep farm just fine. Uh, the Illuminant is going to be somewhat annoying, but I imagine once Draw Ranger gets level 2 and Frost Arrow up, she could start forcing some kills. Yeah, it does have to be careful though not to tank that Illuminate. As we can see, Hylai Die diving a bit deeper and setting up. Follow, follow up Illuminate, slightly off the mark. Already Puppy, he's expended all of his mana here just to run around invis and scout. It is keeping the Abaddon busy, and it looks like for the time being, uh, the pressure will mount on the Drow Ranger. Uh, I kind of want to check out the other lanes, but I just have this feeling Secret want to die. <laughs> yeah, and, and this Bounty Hunter play is kind of all in here. Like you said, he's out of mana, he's not going to be able to do anything top or mid, so for Puppy and Team Secret, they have to kind of make it and break it. I know we're only like 90 seconds into the laning stage, but uh, they, they really need to make this defense, uh, offensive trial lane work. Yeah, so our other lanes, quickly looking at those, we do have a safe lane Slardar up against Young for You on the Batrider. Uh, in the mid lane for the time being, it's going to be super on the Dragonite, a super special uh, versus that Razor. Not a good matchup for Dragonite at all and already. He's feeling the burn. Uh, so it's it looks like Secret will get the laning stage advantage, at least for now overall, with at least two out of three lanes being pretty advantageous, and Slardar still getting his experience and and some farm and already has the magic stick. But I guess my question is, like, will they get enough out of the lanes to make the draft work after the lanes end? As we'll see Puppy, quick uh, suicide, he's going to come right back, though. They being Secret or, uh, or yeah. Alpha? Secret, yeah. yeah. I I think so. I think Slaughter getting the farm is the, the critical component in this, especially when you mention, look, this draft has no stuns and Slaughter is your only son. He needs that early blink. He needs to be explosive. And honestly, he needs to be the one getting the blink before the Batrider. That's really going to be the big race. Because once the Batrider blink comes online, LFY feels comfortably uh, being able to push. Whereas if the Slaughter blink comes online before, then you know we're going to transition into a ganking phase, and that, oh, that helps. Puppy, Puppy big so. rotation there. After that suicide to Roshan, TP's right back top, runs down the Batrider, and 
Talk about Slardar having a good start. Now he is definitely going to have it simultaneously. Abaddon, pretty low here in the mana and health department. Just being spammed out of this lane. Generally where we see the Keeper of the Light struggle in historically in these tri-lane scenarios as, as they go again on the top lane, they get the crush off. Firefly forced out. That will prompt a retreat, but uh, also with the Firefly down, maybe they look to go again. But yeah, w when we've seen them struggle is when the Keeper of the Light gets killed off repeatedly, but they have not been able to jump him. Pi just sitting back and winning that War of Attrition. This reminds me of a very old classic offensive tri-lane where you go like Coddle, Earthshaker, and, and PL. You just like spam them down. And this is a, a strong variation of that. Phantom Assassin with a Siphoning Dagger, and then you got the Luminate from the trees. There's very little you could do. I, I say Draw Ranger is forcing a kill, but she can't sit in the front line and tank repeatedly. They all got things like Magic Stick and whatnot, but it's not enough to recover the amount of HP that they're losing. And the Dagger Spam is just infuriating as a Drow. It helps secure the PACS where needed, and, and then of course zones him out a bit as Puppy continues to stay active here. He'll snag an invis rune take it away from young for you so he gets the first blood he controls the runes he proves at least a nuisance bottom and i mean speaking of nuisance it is worth mentioning they have not managed to deward this camp uh, at all their dewards failed thus far which means lgd forever young not getting their levels on the oracle also uh, abaddon still level one so as unusual a secrets draft looked initially the way they've executed has just completely Punished LGD, they're already up 1,500 gold, 1,000 experience. Yeah. Where offensive trialing fails is where, you know, even if they don't get kills, even though you deny experience, uh, the, the Radiant safe lane still gets the pulls. But like you said, both wars actually block, blocking up both camps. And you got a defensive trialing who actually doesn't have a plan B. Ab Abaddon and Oracle are not great gankers. So they can't just say, all right, we're going to ditch trial and gank mid. That option is uh, not on the table. So Xiaowei is going to have to pull themselves out of this hole somehow. Uh, Director 8, what do you got for us? Yeah, we'll find out soon enough. What Puppy's got right now is uh, an annoying rotation into the woods. He's going to try to steal some of this experience from Young for you, maybe. One or two of the big creeps. Doesn't have anyone to help actually threaten for a kill, but just leeching this experience is very juicy. He's already level 3 now, keeping the pace with uh, the Bat Rider. And also, I do want to point out, he dropped a ward down top, so this frees up your Slardar. 28 CS already. A complete free farm Slardar thus far, and, I mean, really putting 4 Ev in pole position to take over this game come mid game. Yep, Dragon on the mid lane though, still holding his own. He's down a couple of CS, but able to actually chunk the tower quite a bit. So, um, if he has a very strong game, that will kind of pull Caudal off to the bottom lane, off the bottom lane, and you know start to defend these early towers. So, and it's going to be really up to Super uh, from the Radiant side to carry them back. Of course, Batrider Blink Dagger is also looming up, but he might not go straight blink this game. We might see like that drum spill that uh, we, oh. we, see, we do see so often. Uh, look at this, Lumi. We've got the Arcane Rune Chakra Magic combo, so <laughs> more daggers than you can even uh, try to throw out. He's going to be keeping his fingers busy, even though he's normally not a heavy micro hero. They move it oh. on to Young for you. Dagger, quick pop pop, and uh, a blink forward, securing the kill. Puppy uh, there to assist to get a nice Observer Ward down to enable this aggression. You know, I've been seeing a lot of PA, but not a lot of PA with things like Orb of Venom or Blightstone. What's your thought on that? I feel like you're missing a lot of value, especially on a Caudal lineup where you're going to be spamming daggers. I actually saw both of them on a support PA uh, in this event. Is Absolute 5 just getting completely punished. Dove and picked off, and now they're going to look oh. for a bit more. It's feeling like a pub stop right now. Secret just running down LGD Forever Young one by one, and there's no counter ganks. There's really no adjustment whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, again... Abaddon Oracle, the, the weakness of this two support duel is that they have to win their lane, they have to get experience. They're not gankers, they can't really tower dive that efficiently, so... And they're not doing the one thing that they're designed to do, so it ain't great. Yeah, with a Drow first pick, I, I guess for Secret, they, they had a rough idea of what LGD wanted, but... LGD completely focused on their five-man mid-game. They have to get there first. They're gonna smoke, but it's under a puppy ward, I believe. Yep. Yeah, well, let's scout it if they were looking. They're going to rotate on the mid. I didn't see any pains from Secret, so maybe they're not aware this is coming. As the Dragon Tail will initiate things, catching out mid one in the mid lane. They're going to follow this up. Keeper of the Light, though, TPing in to try and turn things around. Batrider arrives, just trying to roast them from above. We'll bring him down. Looking now for the Keeper of the Light. Getting on top of Gandalf, and the follow up Dragon Tail secures this kill as well. He will immolate. He will drop to the Abaddon Shield, but Puppy arrives already level four, and the Daggers are going to come out furiously here. Jumping in MP will secure a kill, but 
May pay with his own life as Puppy's killing spree ended. A very important bounty hunter kill. Not too often you utter those words in one sentence, but... Yeah, that that's a great trade for Alf. Why they got about a 700 net worth gold exchange from that. And more importantly, finally Monet for the first time in 8 minutes gets a lane to himself. Gets to hit some CS. Looks like he's gone for the hero killing build here. Frost arrow max instead of the precision aura. I think he understands that, look, the push is not happening, or at least anytime soon, so let's pick up some uh, ability to defend or, or attack and uh, worry about the tower pushing a little bit later on. It really reminds me of that sniper game we saw yesterday, where the sniper just felt useless. Every time he entered the lane, he was threatened to be ganked. This game, they have good defensive supports, but he just can't be on his own, so he hides behind the tower for now. Puppy uh -oh. scouting him out, and they're going to look for the dive here. Mid one, prepping. He gets the static link off. That'll give them the vision they need. Good gust, instant TP. Puppy, he has the shuriken. He can't get it off. Monet, with excellent reactions under pressure, will make it out. And, uh, well, he heads towards top even, so yeah. not only does he TP out, but he stays cool under pressure, and he immediately goes to another lane where he can actually farm safely. Now, Gus lasts exactly three seconds. Your TP channel time, three seconds. And like you said, not picnicking, not that double double tap on the, on the TP scroll. But instead, he goes top. And looks like he's going to be joined by Smoke Gang. I do believe, again, this one is actually... Uh, they saw them run into the trees. They did not see the smoke go off. So, could maybe catch Pi here. Yep. Or maybe get their smoke broken by the Slardar, who is very close to a blink. What a great time to gank him it would be for LGD, who need these kills to get back in the game. They continue to fall further and further behind. They want a five, man, but it feels a little early, Lumi. They don't have their blink on the Batrider yet. Dragonite's still working towards his first item. No Oracle level six, no Abaddon level six. Drow just got hers, but has no items on top of this. And well, they need to find something here. They're gonna try to initiate with an Oracle, but a Blinding Light says hell no. Yeah. You know, we talked about how Secret doesn't have that many stuns. If you look at LFY's lineup, they also <laughs> don't have that many stuns either. They got Dragonite as a single target initiate, and then they got Batrider. That's pretty much it. And especially in that mid gank, it looked really scary as they were diving a Razor. But the good thing is they do have DK. They will be able to push down tower with relative leads, honestly. And uh, they'll be back to defend their towers. That's going to help you out working towards his drums. And I think it has to be drums early. Looks like he is saving a lot of gold. The reason I say drums is on all, all these chases, they just need that extra burst of mobility, especially when they don't have enough stuns. Uh, feed or feed will just feed. Uh, <laughs> don't have his ultimate ready. Yeah, Abaddon very close to the level 6, but not quite there. It needs a couple more waves of experience. Is not being given it as we see the dagger spam just ramping up on the bottom lane and PA able to play with so much confidence because of that Observer Ward. But as I say that, Dragonite creeping in. The ultimate is going to wear off. Can he get the Dragon Tail off in time? He yes. barely grabs MP, and that should be a kill, barring some incredible evasion procs. Those were anything but. He will fall, and these are the types of kills that will put the, the gas back in LGD's tank. Yeah. I, I want to ask you about uh, his item choices. He's going for the Desolator, which is a fairly common build nowadays. But when we see very aggressive PA players, like let's say MVP's Q, he's really been opting for the Vanguard first. I almost feel like Vanguard first might be a little bit better in this game. I know they're leading, and you want to push your leave a bit, but it, uh, Vanguard might have saved them there. I feel like the, the idea with this Deso is, um, now that the dagger is, is physical damage, he's just trying to abuse that, like, the Deso, amp damage, double dagger, chakra magic, and just, like, kill people for free. It's kind of like a, a physical Dagon almost. <laughs> well, here comes a, a man mode attack. Flardar just quickly crushing and deleting the Drow Ranger. There was no more dire vision for that directly as far as wards go, but Puppy, just always in the right place at the right time to scout things out. So, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. It's, it seems like the slightly riskier build, but given their draft, it has a lot of synergy. Oh, looks like LPC in a lot of trouble as well. Forev coming in, trying to get the kill. False Prom is going to come through. Forev for actually is going to be the one going down. Lots of heal. Is LPC going to blow up at the end of that? Nope. Yeah, he is. Nope. Yeah. Uh, one for one trade, though, but uh, they got the slaughter. By the way, that gank was very cool executed. Hold that thought. Forev is still coming in. They just roamed the bounty and the Kado into the jungle. And then obviously Kado using his ultimate, recalling the slaughter in. So they never actually saw slaughter come in because, well, he didn't actually walk there. Good stuff. Illuminate being spammed here in the mid lane and secret. Uh, the big thing with them is they're getting a lot of experience. Like the, the tower gold is one thing, but uh, they are they're doing a good job of keeping the support levels up. Already level seven on the keeper light. He didn't max the chakra magic first, and no points in mono league. Not a particularly 
good Monolith game, I suppose. Is, hey, Draw Ranger, how you doing, buddy? Where do you think you're going? Uh, Monet is not going anywhere. It's back to the well. He's dead again. Still looking for the turnaround here on the puppy. They make their move. Do they have detection? They do not. These supports are on food stamps, Lumi, and that means Bounty Hunter is a happy camper. Yeah, they are. Uh, but they're going to try to gank themselves back. Superheroes grouped up again. I, yeah, they have a smoke on Abaddon. They will pop it this time for the first time. Not under a secret ward. Question is, where do they go? And where can they find? I don't. I mean, they see Kato, but I, I don't think you want to kill Kato with your smoke. Bottom tower is yeah, what else do you get? <laughs> they're, they're doing this with just a single dust on the Batrider, so... I'm, Puppy could also potentially break Radiance the smoke and... Doesn't happen to be in the right location to do it. Young for you creeping out has the blink now, but oh, I hear a recall. And yep. What do you know? It is Senor Puppy, and they're gonna drag him right back. Dust available, not being used just yet. And oh, okay, got him. Will pop it. Was trying to save a little bit of gold there. Every little bit helps. But. You know the funny thing is like, hey, Pilot died. Thanks for the thanks for the great recall. Because they don't <laughs> they don't want to gank him, but they will gank him. Bounty hunter that had you know four kill streak, or not four kill streak, but. He has a lot of kills. Top lane, uh, Razor running into the Dragonite. He'll get himself the rune. Dragonlands already up on the hero, so great siege capabilities here on the DK. Yeah, he's doing quite well considering the lane. Just kind of sat back, spam the breathe fire, and uh, then as soon as he hits level six, he is able to siege tower. Super has definitely been the most successful hero thus far. Still not quite there in terms of farm, but. At what point do you see LGD Forever Young actually grouping Lumi? Like, do they even group? Because it felt like they wanted to five man, but the way the lanes have gone, do they have that capability anymore, or do they have to just entirely give up on pushing? I think if your Dragonite has BKB, and if one of your support have a big defensive item, let's say a four staff or a mech, then I think they could give it a give it a shot. Uh, but until that, it's just kind of farm, avoid ganks for bounty hunter. Because once you have those two items, the BKB gets the front line for the DK, and then the, the big item, let's say a mech, between False Promise and mech, like, your Drow Ranger is going to be kept relatively safe. All right. Well, they've got some ammunition now for the, the dagger machine gun as the Desolator has been picked up. So what does Secret do with this? Are we going to see a gank? Are we going to see a Roche sneak? What are you expecting? They want to gank, but they've been smoking nonstop, right? It's, it's out uh, for the next two minutes, so... I think it's just kind of hope and, and pray that you don't get you don't get wrecked by the daggers. They're gonna try to five man push, and I, I think this. Is... I think Secret want to fight this Lumi. Yeah, I think so too. They're missing the mech on Puppy, which is close, but this Deso is gonna hurt. Drow might just die instantly to the daggers. Even the Dragonite has to be careful. Getting forced back uh -oh. here. He is tracked up. Shuriken, a long range lob bouncing through. Not enough to get the kill with the Blake. The dagger, the counter heal. <laughs> just waiting for that crit. And waiting for a little more initiation potential. Young for you though, getting blinding light back. Such great play by Pylai Dai to limit this initiation. And then, oh my god, Gandalf raining down the pain from above as they just ignore the Abaddon. The result of it chase passed onto the Dragonite, looking to kill him off as well. He's being healed up, healed up, healed up. Doesn't die just yet. Moving now into the Razor, but they've lost three in the back lines. They're going to lose him as well. That's four down, and the lone survivor is a low and now dead Abaddon. A complete wipeout. MVP. This man right here, Keeper of the Light. Yeah, Blinding Light was great. And again, the surprising thing for me, and I've seen this from LFY a lot, is they're taking a lot of dubious fights. Yesterday when they're playing IGV, they took a number of those where they gave up huge leads. They don't have a lead to give up here. That was that was bad initiation without four staff, so the he can't actually drag the Razor back because of unstable current. And the Razor stood on the high ground. Everybody was trying to go up a high ground and choke point against a Razor, against a Keeper of Light. Tracks are flying out, daggers are flying out, and Drow Ranger's just getting blown up at the beginning in, in flat under a second does not help. And now they have a mech. So, well, if you thought LGD had the better five-man draft on paper, I think uh, in practice, that's not gonna prove to be the case. Dagger. Double dagger, okay. No crits. I mean, he has not had the, the RNG with him, but sooner or later, it's gonna happen. It's gonna be an ugly sight for LGD. Like you said, that pseudo-random distribution is only going to make things easier the more he misses. Yeah. This is this is the one scenario you really should be counting your PRD, especially when you have a Shocker Magic to double your chances. Speaking of double, that's a double damage. I think they could actually start thinking about Roche. Um, you are Roching against a Bat Rider, but 
at the same time, you're so far ahead. I, I don't think LFY could actually defend it. Uh oh. Well, this will be Roche. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's like a Roche. Room. It's a Roche, and they won't lose anything from it. I don't think. Uh, yeah, like LFY can't push it out of power. Top and mid is already down, so. Easy peasy. Yeah, look how fast Roshan drops with a minus 18 armor applied. Simple stuff for them. So they get an Aegis on PA now, who's been very patient, very passive overall from MP. But now he's got a little more confidence if he wants to dive in, knowing that the mech is there to bail him out. And of course, he'll have that second life. I, it just feels like LGD are just constantly on the back foot this game. Ever since the laning stage, and it's been a slow and steady descent into madness. They're now down 10,000 gold, closing in on 10,000 experience. And really, Lumi, like they've had one or two smoke ganks, but they've been on supports. Like, it just, there yeah. hasn't been much going for this team. Well, LD, as experienced viewers of Shao 8's past games, we know this is. Pretty much the norm, right? For a, a post, <laughs> like a standard LGD lineup, they lose the laning stage very badly, and they hold high ground because that's what they do, and they just win late game. So let's talk about the high ground. On Team Secret, you got a Slaughter, you got a Razor, who's I imagine not building eggs anytime soon, and you got a Deso PA. How how effectively do you think they can go high ground? Yeah, I find go lead. To me, this is like a pick and push draft, right? You want to like get a couple of kills and then you go high ground, or. Right. Or you get the Razor to super farm mode, but I, I definitely agree with you. They, they don't have a great way to initiate against, uh, to counter the lasso. Like, sure, we saw a godly blinding light last fight. That is not something you can hang your hat on to happen every engagement. So I think Secret are going to be very content to farm for a long time. We'll see a Vanguard now on the Phantom Assassin uh, to go with that. The, the, they, they do have Keeper of the Light, though, so they can get the Ags and help sustain the push that way. Sure, um, yeah. She's already got 1,700 gold and a point booster, but... Yeah, it's a very good point. They are not a natural high ground lineup by any stretch. Vanguard PA can actually like just walk up the high ground in between you know the Vanguard and Blur, just kind of tank a couple of hits, apply that Deso debuff on the tower. Lots of pot shot, but it's not a, a death wall push by any means. But like you said, they are gonna be looking for picks, um, smoking gank smoke ganking up top. But I think they're just gonna get themselves a, a tier one for the troubles. Monet buying himself a lot of time to farm, but. I mean, what is he getting? Like, Hurricane Pike? It's, it doesn't really help too much against PA. A blank, oh. a crush, the follow-up shuriken, and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. See you later, Drow. She has been a non-factor this game, and that will continue here. Yeah. So I, I do want to talk about Abaddon's skill build. You do want to max Aphotic Shield, because it's the most value you get uh, between your two heals. But I think this is one of the few games you want to max your, your Miss Coil first. If you could only have time to cast one ability, Mist Coil has a longer cast range by far, and also heals or slash blocks more. Um, I think if he has Max Coil there, he would have been able to save Draw long enough where he could drop the Aphotic Shield. Probably would have still died, but who knows? Just, you know, a little bit here, a little Secret, bit there. Secret, so confident than their ability to push. that They just march down mid and they do it without the Slardar even remotely in sight. He will be recalled now. But they didn't feel like they needed him as they began this siege. And not the best pushy lineup, but when you're sitting on this kind of gold advantage, you can still do some damage to buildings here. Shiva's now complete, a mid one. All lanes being pushed in, and I mean, I, I just look at the vision game, Lumi. Like, it was already superior early from Puppy's movements, and now it only gets worse. Deep ward planted down bottom, no tower at that area of the map, so you don't have heroes that can run off on their own if you're LGD for every young. You don't have a Naga, you don't have a super tanky core, you know, like an Alchemist. Uh, you, you don't have a super elusive core like a Slark, you have a Drow, a Dragonite, immobile, easily ganked heroes. Uh, Dragonite a bit tanky, but still not very evasive. They're just, they're five manning their own jungle. Well, Secret yeah. are just winning by default here. And it's not just the cores, you know, sometimes you see lineups where they have supports that could do a little bit of split pushing, like a Wyvern or a Shadow Shaman with a blink. They don't got anything of that of nature either, Abaddon and Oracle. Also, just kind of slow, do nothing hero. For a second, I just looked at Puppy's score. He's 5, 3, and 10. Yes. He's involved in the 15 out of their 16 kills. Yeah, this is uh, not a flawless performance by Puppy, but it's about as close to perfection as you can possibly get in the world of Dota 2. And he's doing it as a roaming four position support. Uh oh, Bat, gonna tank one for the team. Or not! Wings away. Puppy needs to carry because uh, 4 a little off the mark Ooh. here. Does manage to 
barely <laughs> hit that second crutch, it looks like. Did you see that by Yao? The four staff pushing him away, and that's gonna make it out for everybody. All right, a little bit there, pretty good. It looked like he got, I mean, it's kind of hard with the perfect world service. It actually looked like he got stunned mid-force, but does end up making it out in the end, so. Something for LGD, but their big yeah. plays are still just not dying. Secret's big plays are getting kills and gold. Yeah. Getting killed and, like, wrecking your base. Yeah, that's exactly what they're looking to do. But they are having quite a bit of vision up here uh, on the top part of the map where Yao is. Are we going to see a four-man group up smoke? Hmm. Do they Question have... So they have they got one on that. LPC, yeah. The thing is, like, right now you get a smoke. I don't think you get objective out of it, right? I, I don't think they can move across the map that quickly and get a tier two, especially if, let's say, the Coddle is alive. No, I... I don't know if they really want to smoke. For the time being, none available aside from the one on Oracle, so... I think you probably wait until you know Roshan could be respawning and then you make the smoke play. Uh, yeah. So that otherwise you want up a smoke to contest. It's just so it's just so hard to make that play. And even if you do, it, there could be a recall to bring someone else into position. Slardar can get there quickly. PA is pretty mobile. Uh, Bounty hunter could always be there to break it. It's just it's, it feels pretty low percentage for LGD. Yeah. And they just don't want to go for it yet. Puppy just picked up a gem. Okay, they're gonna see Xiao A, but Xiao A's. The one man that could frontline with, with some safety because of his ult. Uh, you go say him. that, Lumi, and I think you're right about it. As they do grab the slaughter, they drag him back, but can they focus him down? He's got a BKB, gets off the crush, slowing down the Dragonite. Now they move forward onto the Abaddon, already the ultimate committed. PA, my kingdom for a crit, says MP, please already, give me one! And he gets it, but the shield perfectly timed as that dagger is unable to complete the kill. Still Oracle will fall. Will PA dive a bit deeper? They also lose their Drow Ranger, the Oracle in the end, uh, the second casualty there. So two fall. And yep. Secret transitioned right to a push, and what do you know? They've got the eggs on Keeper, so everyone can heal right back up. Yep, and they got a gem on Keeper as well now, so all your wards are going to be gone. Uh, at least during daytime. It's very easy D ward, and I I don't know if they're going to walk off the U warding right now, because they might actually poke up on the high ground a little bit. And that was a good fight for LGD. Like, what more can you hope for? They initiate on a bad end. You get a clean lasso up on the Slardar before he BKB, so he actually takes damage. And they're still getting run over. Now Dragonite getting caught up position. Still no BKB, though he's close to it. Forced back to keep him alive. But Secret very confident to jump forward. The Breathe Fire connects nicely, but a Blinding Light also pushing Dragonite into a oh! terrible position. There's the crit. The damage not quite enough. The heals barely keeping the Dragonite alive. Still, though, that means nothing left to protect their Batrider and Illuminate again and again. Sustaining this siege as they continue to commit forward. Lurking on the, sl on the Abaddon. Uh, Slardar almost dead. Will end up falling Abaddon. But the ultimate keeps alive for now. Puppy, sentry ward committed. He runs back in, and he will take the Oracle with him. Oh, they might get one more. PA in a lot of trouble. Yeah, PA getting lasso, dragged back a bit further. Illuminate crashing through, keeping that PA alive. This could be a third death. Pushed back and will end up falling. The Hurricane Pike gets the job done. And, well, you called it, Lumi, that vaunted Shao 8. High ground defense. Even with the Batrider buyback, even with track. They still get a 2,700 gold swing, or sorry, uh, 1,900 gold swing. Yeah. You know, earlier you were asking, like, they got everything they won LFY in that fight, but they still lost it. Not everything. They didn't fight in the high ground. It was a very awkward choke point where half the team, like, it was in a very random ramp, and mm -hmm. half the team wanted to run, half the team didn't want to run, and they want to fight. Whereas the, the very big different fight just now is in the base. You know, it's a very clear objective. We need to stay near our towers. We have perfect vision here. And we chase when we're ahead. And like you said, with the buyback from Batrider, easy peasy pickoffs. And we got to be careful. Let me Secret. ask you, uh, looking at the PA build for MP this game, he went into a Vanguard. He went back for a Yasha. Thoughts on the build? I, I was like, eh, maybe he gets a Crimson Guard to help them five man, although it's not like a go-to PA item. I was like, ah, oh, it could be Abyssal. But it ends up just being a Yasha build. So he's, he's invested like over 4K gold here. And... Very mid gamey items after a pretty snowball start. Do you do you like this build? Would you rather see something else? Um, I like the PA into a Manta style because it gives you that little bit extra push. Also, your illusions could could dig wrong, which is you know a big crit, so that's always a benefit. Um, I don't think it's going to be a Crimson. It's likely a Abyssal, but honestly, Abyssal is not that great this game. You have multiple ways to save an ally from that stun, so. I think it's more of the nature of the draft where it doesn't feel like she have a good item to transition off of, dude. 
I feel like my worry is once you get a silver edge on Drow, she can or MTB. Yeah, oh, she's got a Shadow Blade, so I'm, I'm envisioning Silver Edge probably coming next, but yeah, either right. way, that plus Hurricane Pike, you can just delete PA in fights. PA is entirely reliant on, reliant on her passives and showing no signs of trying to deal with that Silver Edge for now. So it really puts emphasis on the secret vision game, and, and good news for them, they do still have the gem. They will move into the Roche pit and look for that next stages, but... I mean, from the sound of it, I, I guess you prefer more something like a BKB to... Um. No, I don't. I'm, I'm just. I'm, I'm just trying to think it through here. That's like the items to me are very snowbally. Like PA wants to just stay ahead, be able to fight constantly, and snowball for kills. But with the way LGD are playing, very five-man heavy, very group up and fight. Like you're not really getting as much value out of this build as what you would in an, another game. So, it. I think it definitely limits the late game potential. But perhaps Secret are just feeling like they're they're not going to have the best late game anyway. They without those kills. So. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, that was the first fight they lost in 26 minutes or whatever it was, right? And they're so. still very far ahead. They still control yeah. the map. LGD probably have to win one or two more fights to really start to make a dent in this lead. But I feel like the net worth can be deceptive. It's a lot of money on a PA who can be pretty hard countered uh, by this lineup later on in the game. You don't have a great counter for Lasso late game. To me, it's not one of those games where it's like the gold graph necessarily tells the tale. For now, I think it does, but if it's this kind of a lead in 10, 15 minutes, I, I would start to say LGD are in a comfortable position at that point, but they're, they're not yeah. out of the woods yet for me. I would agree. Uh, also, a lot of this lead is built by a bounty hunter, which a lot of his go injection for the team is just early on, you know, just random track kills here and there, random track kills and team fights. As the game winds down and it's just more farming oriented, Part, bounty does less and less, you know, you don't find as many random track kills, uh, your your information gathering capability are, are not as useful. Yeah, no, we're going to see Puppy dig a, a bit deeper to try and get that information, dropping a, like the anti-tinker ward, I guess you would call it, up on the cliff here, so there is no tinker in the game. Aggressive wards off in the Radiant Jungle, they're trying to shove in all three lanes here as much as possible. They don't have anyone to BOT bottom and push that lane in, still mid and top. Well onto the radiant side of the base, and this is the time for Secret oh. to strike with the double dagger, bringing the Baden down to half, almost forcing yeah. out his ultimate immediately. But the Oracle is a good way to help counter this uh, kind of pressure. Chipping away uh, at enemy heroes, the PA is, but that just gets healed right off. Yep. I mean, actually pushing the wave into the base, I think LFY is happy with that. It's like, great, we get to stay next to our tower and farm. I mean, it's uh, maybe almost better that Secret lets them leave the base, and then you get a kill or two, and then, you know, go from there. Yeah, they are getting out farmed, though. Secret are doing a good job at continuing to increase that gold lead. It, it, it does feel like right now it's enough that LGD have to win a fight to come back. Yeah. But at some point, Secret might come a-knocking. For now, slowly squeezing, sieging. They got their next round of items, BKB on Slardar, BKB on Razor. Uh, already picked up the Shivas, another 2300 gold banked on that Razor, and to go with it, the completed Manta on the PA, so... Everyone continues to itemize, even the Bounty Hunter grabbing a Vlad's great pickup to help sustain the PA in fights. And uh, yeah. LGD just waiting for the Miracle High Ground defense. Also, I mean, you gotta keep in mind that Secret is essentially playing with loaded dice, right? In a team fight where you just cut off one hero instantly with a Cryptic Growl crit, you just win. Uh, very similar to the one that we saw in the river where Draw Rangers got blow up. So his crit RNG on the daggers is not very good. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. I think I've yeah. seen like one dagger crit and one regular crit. And it, and it's like on Abaddon, which is like okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's like great. Now my ultimate's gone off, and and you're wasting time trying to focus me. Yeah. But a smoke from Seeker now. They creep in. They leave the razor out in front. They send MP. Barreling in, double dagger, and no crits once again. They make their committed jump, but it's onto the Batrider. Great catch Ooh. if they can kill him, but there's the Oracle with the save. They look for the turn. They do force the Oracle to pop his ultimate, and they get out cleanly. Old BKB was committed, though, on the Slardar. Gonna continue the siege here. PA just banting right out of the Drow Silence. Shuriken bouncing in, but not going to bounce at all uh, after that initial hit. And now Young for you with the lasso. He does manage to find mid one, and this is the power of the bat and high ground defense. Quickly bringing him down. Now they can try to focus the PA. Does have the Aegis, though. Buyback coming from the Razor. Wants to rejoin the fight. They can recall him in, but they might also get this PA Aegis. They do. Pushing a bat in. 
still the ultimate available. LGD, despite almost a 20k gold deficit, I believe, are still holding high ground here with confidence. But with that buyback, no lasso, no oracle ult, this might just mean the rack for me. And no BKB on Dragonite. He's really their front line, and they're going to slow him down with some dagger. He tries to go in. Slaughter is going to zone him out. Rax has just gone down, and now it's going to be LFY trying to trace for a couple kills. Shuriken onto a bad end, but doesn't have his ultimate. Has to force himself away in secret. They stick around. They want that second Rax. They want the whole lane completely caved in. And it will be. That's finished off, but now looking for those cleanup kills on the way out. Still don't have that Silver Edge on Drow to be able to quickly focus PA down in the fight. Secret will just mosey on the bottom. Even with the Razor buyback, he still has BKB. And so they feel confident they can go for round two. Yeah, and Dragonite's ultimate's down for 20 more seconds. So that's, I think, the, the pr primary reason why they want to get It's so important that he it. gets that level three Elder Dragon form. It's so good to have against PA. Even, yeah. uh, to some extent, Stol Slardar, who wants to chase in fights, but just not quite there yet. I mean, we're 34 minutes in. Normally, a Dragonite with a good start, which he did, would be level 16. So much five manning for the team this game. Five man take a jungle camp. I mean, ain't great for EXP. Meanwhile, his opposing Razor mid one, uh, level 19 nearly. Well, uh, pressure is off. They have lost racks. They're smoked up as well. I, half the team's not in the smoke. I'm not exactly sure what, what the smoke is about, but they, they need to save one for Roche, which is, uh, I guess, coming up in about. They have one. Right, that, that, yeah, just the one yeah. for this Roche. Can you really risk leaving the base? I guess is the question. I think it's more you have to now that you lost the Rex. Uh, at the Roche time, not right now. Uh, they're gonna try to move in here. Rather aggressive farming posture from LGD. I say aggressive, that means anywhere down the hill. <laughs> That's aggressive. But secret, they can just threaten that and then back away. Keeper can push to the bottom lane. Lotus Orb now out for Pylai Die. It's raking in the cash. Yep. Normally, when you look up to the top portion of the map, you're like, oh, there's a Razor pushing a lane. We could now go out and, and farm somewhat. You can't. Kado could always recall them back. You have no vision in your jungle. Dyer has absolute vision with Keeper of Light Eggs as well as a gem. So it's it's very, very difficult for LFY to leave the base. Only Abaddon could really poke out and maybe drop a ward to get it immediately dewarded and go from there. I do want to say, I think MP is an absolutely horrendous PA player. I have seen less than 10 kills <laughs> this entire game, Lumi. Uh, this is an embarrassment to Phantom Assassin pros everywhere. <laughs> They'll move in on the feeder feed, trying to lock down the Abad and chase him out. Young for you does get Monoleague stunned, keeps on running, and that'll be that. But yep. it's very easy for Seeker to just squeeze them right back into the base. Now, an item that could turn the tides appears. The Drow Ranger able to pick up the Silver Edge. And at the same time, a BKB nearly done to match that Silver Edge pickup. It's and even if you do hit the PA, it's they do have a, the Razor is farmed enough. He hits pretty hard too in his own right. So unclear if this item will turn the tides. Yeah, I mean it depends on when he uses it. We see that when Team Secret decides to run, Elfy has the chasing capabilities to kind of get quick kills. It's more of can Elfy stand the ground. You have a lineup that's designed to do so, but they're under farm, under leveled. Does Dragon have to 16 yet? He does. So, and he also has got 3.5k in the in the bank. I think this is where you make the big decision of, do we save for buyback or do we get an item? I, I think you get an item because you're Dragonite. Like if you buy back without your ult, you don't. Yeah, you really don't contribute much, and I, they just uh, to me they need more firepower. Like they're not right. gonna win fights for the buyback. Is a great initiation comes out, but is it great? <laughs> Maybe in a bit too far. Slardar getting dragged way back behind enemy lines, but he's so tanky with the BKB, forcing the Drow away, driving the Dragonite back, even through his ultimate. He is focused down. He's got 3,600 gold banked. He might need to spend it. Oracle's already quit the ult to try and save the Drow Ranger. They just keep on diving them back to the well, onwards and upwards, and they get kills where needed. Double damage rate still going on this Phantom Assassin, but will blink away to safety. MP playing it safe, forcing out the buyback, the bad, and end Dragonite back in the fray. Puppy will go down, and he goes back in. There's a crit, finally! Shredding them and turning for the Dragonite as well. They'll bash down the Abaddon. They'll clean up the Dragonite. That's a double dieback. Batrider wants to make it a triple, but he won't have a chance because already LGD have called GG. Oh, that was a, a pretty big misplay on the Oracle's part. He disarmed the Drow Ranger after he used the False Promise. So even though they lasso the Slaughter in the front line, Drow Ranger just stood there. It was like, why can't I attack? Oh, my teammate disarmed him. So they all had to just run. You're running from Mana Leaks, PA Daggers, as well as the Slaughter. Good luck.
They really did have to play immaculately at that point. I mean, they're down like 25,000 gold with a late of yeah. Rex down. And they're up against track gold. It, it, it just didn't happen. But if you had to kind of zero in on one thing to change for this game, Lumi, uh, where would you put the flaw in the game plan for LGD? Was it their execution? Was it their draft? Was it like the shot calling for the team? Uh, where? What do you think is the biggest issue? And, and what would you change if you're Xiao Wei heading into game number two? They, they drafted a tri lane where it had no plan, plan B if it lost, and it lost pretty badly. Uh, the Abaddon was a, a pretty nice idea, but maybe I would change either the Abaddon slash Orko, probably the Abaddon, into a hero that gives me a plan B while still having to save. Me, like maybe Winter Wyvern, you get the D push a little bit, you still got the Cole Embrace. The Curse would have been pretty good against this kind of group up and pushing lineup. Um, I, I would look at the, the, the bottom lane because it's really what kind of fell apart for, for LFY. Well, I gotta tell you, I, I love the fact that Secret is c continuing to just draft differently and, and not play one style. It's also nice to see them playing more offensive Dota. Uh, the, the old Secret lineup with EE and Arteezy, I mean, it was, it was just farm all game, like farm, farm for 80 <laughs> minutes. You know, and yeah. even when Secret was successful, a lot of the times it, it did come on the back of, uh, you know, Weeha creating space and then Envy just farming until he had buyback, Stash Rapier, you know, like the Ember Spirit games at Shanghai. Uh, and while it could be impressive, like it's it's cool to see Secret completely adapting their style and playing this like up in your face, aggressive tri lane, take the fight to the enemy team early type of style. I mean, they got mid one and some Korean players, so you gotta <laughs> play to your strengths, right? <laughs> Certainly they do. So guys, he's Luminous. I'm LD. You're watching Beyond the Summit's coverage of MDL Autumn 2016. We're gonna step away here for a moment, but when we come back, we'll see if LGD Forever Young can force this best of three into a decider or if a Secret are just going to cleanly take it 2-0 in advance to play OG. Stick around. We'll be back.